ای که رفت با خود دلی شکست باردی این چونین به توفان تن مرا سپاردی ای که مهر با تن زدی به دفتر من بعد تو نیامد چه ها که بر سر من بعد تو نیامد چه ها که بر سر من ای خدای آدم چگونه باورم شد آن که روزگاری پناه یاورم شد سایش نماند همیشه بر سر من زیر لب بخندد به مرگ هر پر من زیر لب بخنده به مرگ و پر پر من رفتی ندیدی که بی تا شکست بال و خستم رفتی و ندیدی که بی تو چگونه پر شکستم رفتی و نهادی چه آسان دل مرا به زیر پا رفتی و خیالت زمانی نمی کند مرا رها ای به دل آشنا تا که هستم بیا واهی من اگر نیای واهی من اگر نیای
Consumer Studies. We will be hearing tonight from members of the university community, including Ganimat and Milad's academic mentors and some of their friends. We think of their families in Iran and are making a recording of this evening available to them. Wednesday's tragedy was a profound loss for our university community, and it joined us in somber connection to the other universities and communities in the province and around the country that are also impacted by the loss of so many talented and beloved people. We are particularly aware that two members of the wider Guelph Iranian community also lost their lives. The losses have highlighted the many achievements, the valued contributions, and the deep friendships that anchor the Iranian community, the Iranian Canadian community within our country, our communities, and our hearts. Here in Guelph, we join together in this time of national mourning and national solidarity. And we come together tonight to tell stories, to extend our hands to one another in connection and support, to share words of comfort, and to assure one another that none of us is alone. We begin this evening by hearing from Mana Fazai, a member of the Guelph Iranian Student Association, who along with other association members has been instrumental in planning this evening. Mana. <coughs> Writing this speech has been one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, and I could not help to notice how sometimes words are so helpless in um, expressing certain feelings, certain sadnesses, like this one so deep, so crushing. But at last, words were my only tool to pay my thanks to each and every one of you here tonight um, to honor and celebrate Adimat and Mila's life. As you all know, um, two days ago, the world lost some of its most beautiful souls in an airplane crash, and two members of our large inner circle family were among them, along with many, many others, countless Canadians, Iranians, Ukrainians, and others. I had the honor to know Milad personally and benefit from his wisdom and friendship, despite the short time of him. I also had the pleasure of talking to Nani Matt on multiple occasions, both of them had such lovely, charismatic personalities that touch my heart in many ways that cannot be forgotten. Lastly, I just want to take this time to pay my thanks on behalf of the Iranian Student Association to certain individuals and organizations that went above and beyond to make tonight possible. Rita and the marketing um, and the Department of Marketing, you guys stood by us from the moment we got the horrible news and created a safe space for us to grieve. Matthew, Catherine, Sonia, um, and so many other people that I will not be able to name all. And the wonderful student uh, experience team tonight simply would not have been possible without you guys. The hospitality team, counseling services, and so many others, a thank you is not enough, but it's the best I can do. And I would like to finish this up uh, with a line from Hafez. Shaheen Messe Mayan Sham Barabat de Zabon Hanan Harmon and Anabat de Sukhan Farabat. Thank you. We are honored tonight to be joined by Lori Longfield, Member of Parliament, who will share a few words with us. Thank you, especially to the students, for bringing us together on a really difficult night, on a difficult week. It's hard 
hard to believe that this is only Wednesday. And I think of how many conversations we've had. And when we look at the news reports and, and how Faisal Mullah so eloquently and with such dignity told us about Ghani Mott and Ghani Mott's contribution to biodiversity and to indigenous studies. And how much more was left to be brought forward. Unfortunately, other people will have to carry the torch. And also, Mila, going through PhD and the studies, the people that come to Canada to make their lives better, to make their communities better, to make their the world better, and then to lose them in an instant on Wednesday. Since Wednesday, we've had two Across Canada conversations with members of Parliament being briefed. This afternoon we had a briefing with our Minister of Foreign Affairs, with our Minister of Defense, with our Minister of Transportation to tell us what the current state is of our getting on the ground in Iran. And by tomorrow we hope to have 10 people on the ground. And in the meantime, we've assembled an international response team with many countries that are helping us through these terrible times. Countries like the Netherlands, who also went through a similar uh, situation, losing citizens on a private airline being shot down. Countries like Italy, that have been helping us as our force on the ground in, in Iran. And Switzerland, who's the Iran force on the ground in Canada. So an international response is being formulated. Canada is leading in this. Our Minister of Transport told us that we have experts that are international experts from Canada that will be there to look at the data as it comes off the black box. And we're negotiating so that we can be part of that, so that we can bring what we can to get the answers that the world deserves and that the families deserve, so that they know how this occurred and hopefully justice is done at the end of the day. But beyond justice, we need to understand each other. We have to understand the role that hate plays, the role that fighting hate plays in the world, and how as communities and as people, we have to get together to push back against those forces so that these incredible lives that we've just lost are honored, and that more incredible lives can come forward to help us get through the days ahead, the weeks ahead, and continue some of the amazing work that these young people have been doing. So thank you to the young people for bringing us together tonight. On behalf of the Prime Minister and the ministers that are all working on this, we are grieving with the families, we're grieving with our communities, and we hope that we'll have some better days ahead. We're also honored to have with us tonight Mike Schreiner, Member of Provincial Parliament for Guelph, to bring us some words. Thank you and good evening everyone and I too want to thank the Student Association for bringing us all together to celebrate Ganemek and Milan's life, to remember them and to honor them. And I feel so much love in this room and that's really what we need after what's been a devastating and heartbreaking week and um, i think it's so important for members of the broader guelph community to stand in solidarity with the university with the iranian community um, to show our love and our support and our caring for each other because one of the things that I think makes Guelph such a wonderful place is that we are a caring and inclusive community. We are a community that comes together in the face of tragedy and says that that tragedy will not be in vain, that love will overcome hate, that togetherness will overcome isolation. And I know I've spoken to many people in the university communities across Ontario and across the country. And to lose so many bright minds, and particularly the two bright minds with such promising futures here in Guelph, um, I know it's heartbreaking. 
And so I just want to conclude by saying that I know the university is providing uh, so many supports for anybody in need. Uh, but if there is anyone in the community, university or otherwise, that needs support, uh, counseling services, a friend to lean on, somebody to talk to, um, don't hesitate to reach out to my office. And we can help you find the support that you need. And so thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being here tonight. I think it's so important that we share this moment together. I'd like now to introduce Dr. Franco Vaccarino, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Guelph. Thank you very much, uh, Sonia, and welcome, and thank you to all for, uh, for coming together tonight to honor and to remember our beloved students, Ganinath Azdari and Malad Kasemi. Ariane. Any loss to our community, our campus community, touches all of us in powerful ways, and it's my hope that tonight we can comfort and reach out to one another. I would like to uh, add my own voice uh, as a special thanks and appreciation to the Guelph Iranian Student Association and all the students who uh, helped organize tonight's uh, vigil, vigil. I have to say that your thoughtfulness, your compassion, and your deep uh, sense of caring and respect shines through every element of uh, tonight's uh, program uh, in this vigil. Uh, tonight, we also remember Dr. Carisa Ekbalian and her daughter, Rira Ismailian of Guelph. We offer our deepest and our heartfelt sympathies to their families, to their friends, and, and colleagues. We also offer our deepest and heartfelt sympathies to all the communities and all individuals, people impacted by this tragic event across our country. I do hope that we can find some peace today as we come together in mourning, as we come together in remembrance, and as we come together in solidarity. You know, this, this evening's vigil is a reminder of the vulnerability and I would say the imperfections of the human condition. And yet, at the same time, it's also a powerful reminder, this vigil is also a powerful reminder of the strength of our shared common humanity as we come together this evening. In our Department of Geography, Environment, and Geomatics, Ganymat was studying biocultural conservation with an emphasis on protection of traditional territories uh, and support for indigenous people of Iran. Uh, you have to know that this is an incredibly timely and hugely important issue, not only for Iran, but for our own, our own country, where Ganymed had planned to apply her learning to a project of indigenous peoples in Atlantic Canada. The lab was studying consumer behavior in the Department of Marketing and Consumer Studies. He, uh, you should know, he took on a very challenging project that saw him take additional courses, and this was done on his own time his own volition to learn what he needed to know and what he needed to learn in order to analyze the complex elements of the research data that he was dealing with. And this was a testament to Malad's professionalism, his industriousness, and his commitment to his field. In their time here at the University of Guelph, Ganymat and Malad demonstrated qualities that are a, a real point of pride, a real point of pride for our community, and I would say a high bar for all of us. Commitment to ongoing learning, a powerful sense of collaboration, a powerful sense of coming together, working together, and an enormous, an enormous spirit of curiosity and generosity. Qualities that they have and that help define what this campus and our wider community is all about. We are all uh, so deeply affected and saddened uh, by these lost lives and lost potential. They had an incredible future ahead of them. And the ripple effects of this community loss uh, goes wide and it goes deep. And it, it, it was wonderful uh, to, to see our, our, our elected officials uh, with us uh, uh, today. Uh, Lloyd and Mike, uh, and your words were, were very powerful. Again, a reminder of the deep and 
uh, deep and wide impact that these students had. Indeed, just on my way here, I, I received a call from also from the Minister of Colleges and Universities of the Government of Ontario expressing uh, his uh, deep uh, sympathies and condolences. This is Minister Romano. So again, the uh, ripple effects are, are, are huge and wide. Um, as a university that has an incredibly strong community, we commit to remembering, commit to remembering our community's loss as we reflect on all those lost this week. And we recommit ourselves to upholding the values and the ideals that they demonstrated through their lives and through their long-lasting contributions. Over 20 universities across Canada lost faculty, <coughs> staff, and students this week. And we stand with our colleagues today to remember these lives. Thank you. I'd like now to invite forward Dr. Noella Gray, Graduate Coordinator in the Department of Geography, Environment, and Geomatics, where Gani might study. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Noella Gray. Uh, as, um, I'm like, I'm right now. This is one of those nights, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just introduced a faculty member at the Department of Geography, Environment, and Geomatics. Um, I'd like to begin by sharing a few words on behalf of Dr. Faisal Mbula, who could not be here this evening. Um, Faisal is Skadamat's PhD advisor, and he wanted to share these words with you. Among the 176 people who died in the Ukraine International Airlines flight uh, earlier this week was my PhD student, Skadamat Mestre. Ganymet had been in Iran over the December holiday break to visit family and was returning to the University of Guelph, where she was a student in my lab. Ganymet was an indigenous person who was born into the nomadic Kashkai tribe in southwestern Iran. And like indigenous peoples across the planet, including many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people here in Canada, Ganymet had a very strong personal relationship to her ancestral territories in Iran. Um, these consist of vast arid grasslands, rangelands, and deserts. And scientists now believe that over 80% of the world's biodiversity is found in indigenous and tribal lands, such as the great forests of the Amazon, the arboreal forests here in Canada, as well as the arid regions, such as Ganymat's territory in Iran. She had dedicated her life to protecting these places, which she would often describe in, uh, in lab meetings as territories of life. They are not just the habitat of endangered plants and animals, but also the ancient landscapes that have sustained indigenous peoples like Ganymat's community for thousands of years. Ganymat's PhD thesis was devoted to exploring the biocultural richness of indigenous lands, such as the sacred mountains and rivers, berry picking areas, and places where medicinal plants are harvested. Using participatory community mapping methods, Ganymat had become an expert and working with local tribes to collect and map these critical areas of both ecological and cultural significance. She was particularly well suited for this type of research as she could easily slip between two worlds. The indigenous world, in which sophisticated ecological knowledge about plants and animals is captured in um, not just a language, but song and cultural traditions as well as the Western science world of data, satellite images, statistical analyses. For her PhD dissertation, Dynamat had hoped to partner with First Nations in Canada to begin mapping the biocultural richness of the Royal Forest using participatory mapping methods, as well as remote sensing and geographic information systems. Her first meeting with the Myakpukek First Nation in Newfoundland was scheduled for next month. And an email that she sent to Faisal from Iran just a few days ago she described her excitement about meeting the community for the first time and her worry that her winter boots and jacket might not be up to the task for that notoriously biting Newfoundland winter. The loss of Ghanima Nizdari, as well as so many other talented students, faculty, and that Tehran air disaster is devastating for university communities across the country. The one thing that brings me a little comfort in coping with Ghanima's death is the knowledge that my dear student And Fred was a powerful and passionate young leader in defense of indigenous peoples 
and that her life's work will continue. I want to add briefly to Faisal's words um, because I also had the incredible privilege and pleasure of getting to know Gadimat over these past few months. Uh, Gadimat was a giant-sized personality in a petite body. Uh, Faisal describes her as an absolute firecracker, uh, and it's a perfect metaphor. Firecrackers are tiny little packages that produce an immense amount of light, lighting up dark night skies and gathering people together in their glow. And I speak from experience that Gadimat's smile could light up a room and she always had one ready to share. Her energy and her positivity were infectious. In addition to Ganyamat's work in Iran and her proposed work here with First Nations in Canada, she was also very involved at the international level. She was an esteemed and beloved member of the Indigenous and Community Conserved Area Consortium, an international organization that works to advance Indigenous people's rights in relation to international environmental agreements and policies and to document Indigenous peoples' territories of, of life. And just this past November, I um, had the opportunity to spend some time with Ganymede in Montreal, where she was participating as a formal representative in workshops and no negotiations related to the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. Ganymede was a passionate activist, not afraid to take the microphone in an auditorium full of diplomats and speak truth to power. And here I quote directly from Gadimat's own statement to that UN body to share her words with you. She said to that room full of government diplomats that any new global conservation targets must be a full and appropriate recognition of and support for indigenous people and communities' rights and responsibilities to their collective territories, lands, and waters. She was equally comfortable in the classroom um, where she was an enthusiastic participant in all of our class discussions, uh, not afraid to tackle feminism, postcolonialism, critical realism, and all the other isms I made them study this fall, um, and also never taking herself too seriously. Like many of her peers, Gadi Mott was an international student who briefly began PhD studies in a new country. When we initially offered her admission to the program, Gadi Mott responded to me in an email that she could cry from the happiness. She was so honored to be given this chance. It is we who were honored that Gadi Mat chose to join us. For those of you who knew Gadi Mat, I hope these words do justice to your own memories of her and your relationships with her. And for those of you who did not know her, I hope this helps you to appreciate what an incredible person she is. And I want to thank all of you for being here tonight to honor and celebrate both Ganyamad and Milad's lives and to breathe this tremendous loss together. May we take comfort from one another in the days and weeks to come. Thank you. Our next two speakers are two friends of Ganyamad, Sahar Alijani, and Emily Smith. You'll get so much energy, she said. She loved music, 
When we began to organize our Christmas video, Ganymat received one of the songs we were to use via WhatsApp. Despite being in a meeting at the time, she told us that she immediately started to dance. Ganymat made it no secret how difficult the first semester was. She often told us how much marking she had to do, how tired she was, but she always did so with a smile. While waiting for her flight to go home for the holidays, she sent us a selfie. She was sitting in the airport lounge, laptop in front of her, working on her annotated bibliography. It was due in a few hours, and we all felt the pressure. Her beautiful energy, her smile, and her dedication will be missed by all of us, along with the others that she touched. We'd like to share with you a letter to Ganimat, first in Farsi. تقدیم به قنیمت قنیمت جان ما منتظر آمدنت بودیم چطور توانستی ما را تا ابد منتظر نگه بداری چطور دیگر نتوانیم خنده های زیبایت قلب بزرگ و روح عظیمت را ببینیم و حس کنیم این چه یادگاری بود که برای ما به جای گذاشتی قنیمت جان باور نمی کنیم که در صوب و عذایت نشسته این و این طور آجزان صدایت می زنیم. آیا صدای من را می شنفی؟ آیا این که به زبان مادری صدایت می زنیم برایت بشناتر است؟ تو با رفتنت قلب من را به درد آوردی؟ چطور دلت آمد همه را رها کنیم؟ ای کاش زمان به عقب برمی گشت؟ ای کاش همه اینها فقط خواب بود؟ ای کاش برمیگشتی ای کاش صدای من را بشنوی قنیمت عزیزم ما هرگز لبخند همیشگی و زیبایت را فراموش نخواهیم کرد و قلب من تا ابد برایت میتفد Dear Ganimat what an impression you have made We were waiting for you to join us again and now we'll be waiting forever how can we continue without your beautiful laughter, your big heart, and your amazing spirit? Is this the souvenir you are leaving us with? Dear Ganimat, we can't believe we are here today at your memorial and we're helplessly calling out to you. Do you hear us? Will calling out in your mother tongue help you to hear us? With your passing, our hearts have been broken. We wish we could go back in the past. We wish you could be here and that all of this was just a dream. We hope you hear us. Dear Ganimat, we will never forget your beautiful smile and our hearts will beat for you with her hearts will beat for you forever. I'd like to introduce Dr. Tawheed Islam, professor in the Department of Marketing and Consumer Studies and PhD advisor to Milad. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for coming to remember Milad and Ghanimat. So it's a very difficult time for me and for our department. I'll just briefly say uh, how he came here and what research he was doing. So he joined us in May, you know, so 2019, so about eight months. But uh, I know him for about five years because uh, he applied to our PhD program five years back. So he find out and did research and wants to come to Al. And uh, I was that time in a graduate uh, program admission committee. And he was also interested to my research in new product and innovation. So we interviewed him and we made him an offer. So I'm saying five years back, I think so 2014. 
And then what happened, he also was trying to get into US universities, and he got an offer from one of the top US universities that time. And generally what happens when you got a much better offer, you don't come back to us and say, like, what happened? But that was an exception, because then he came back to me, said, Dr. Islam, that I have this offer, and what do I do? And I'm really interested to go to Guel, but this is the offer, this is the money. And I looked the offer, I said, look, it's all about you, not about us. So we are trying to help you. You go to US, so you know, that's fine. And if you want to do research with us, you'll be able to do that. Then he tried for, you know, then he declined our offer, and then he, he was trying to get into US. But uh, he, his visa got delayed, and the offer expired. So generally, that happened, and so then he was again come back to us that we want to come back to Guelph. So three years back, he again said, okay, I want to come to Guelph again. Then I said, okay, apply again, and I was that time grad coordinator, and then we convinced other committee members, and we made him an offer again, so three years back. And then, it took about a year and a half to Canadian Embassy to give him visa. And, uh, and we had to extend his offer, I think, so multiple times, you know, five or six times. Because it's very difficult when you make an offer, it is time bound. And every time you change the offer, you need to convince your chair, Dean, Ben Bradshaw, and all other people. And your financial package is also changing. So, because he was very, very, you know, very much motivated to come here. He liked us, the department. He thought it was very welcoming. And we also liked him because, you know, he was, we saw that he has a strength because his background was engineering. So we thought about uh, for modeling. And he did an MBA. And so lastly, at the end, so generally we don't accept students in summer. Because of his delay, we, you know, he came in May. And that time I offered him two courses because, you know, generally we, we don't have courses in summer, so. And briefly what he was interested in, uh, it is one of my project under Shark Grant. Uh, it is combining multiple sources of data. So generally what happens, context of the research is when you have a new product, or you want to modify a new product, you need to make decision about investment in future, but you don't have a real purchase data. So in such a situation, what do you do? So generally people do, they do choice experiment and survey and see what, whether people will like the product or not and make the decision. But generally what happens, what people are saying today, they may not do actually when the product comes to the market. So the, my project was, uh, you know, last four years, I, I followed up 10,000 people on six product categories. These are the new product. So, so before product launch, we went to people, say whether you'll buy the product. And they will say, okay, this and that. And we followed up those people for four years. And, and we collected actually what they did. So we have the data of what people say, and we have the data of what people do. And this data modeling is difficult, because this is a challenging topic, because when you are asking people what they will do, the data is different, buy, no buy. But when you are collecting from the market data, they are quantity, you know, price, this and that. So it, is, it was a kind of complex, you know, multiple difficult project. And in the summer, and you need multiple uh, level of expertise. You need to know choice experiment. You need to model multiple sources of data. But he took one course with me on choice experiment, and then he did the literature review. And generally, PhD students in our department start their research in generally third year after completing two years coursework. But from the day one, he was motivated and he has done the literature review, and his plan was to write one review paper in summer, 
then when you are modeling such different sources of data, uh, different way you can do it because uh, you need econometrics model. So for that reason, he took two economics courses this semester, last semester, micro and the econometrics. And this semester, he was supposed to take econometrics too. So he was getting training to model these different sources of data. So another option is to model this data using machine learning. So his plan was to take, you know, stat department machine learning courses and to connect with some of the, he already connected some of the Iranian students engineering departments because they are also doing machine learning. So he was pretty much, uh, you know, we generally uh, think about multiple essays. So he had an idea about four essays, like doing a review paper, model it econometrically, model it machine learning, and also design some new experimental design. And, you know, I have never seen, so we are very, he was very bright. I was very happy to get him into this challenging project. And, uh, you know, I was waiting for him for five years, and then he started the project, and then this happened. And, uh, I hope someone will carry forward and definitely, and this will definitely, he moved the project to a different level. So in future publication, I hope to put his name and to remember him because he already have an idea of four essays. So at some stage, this will be published. And other than that, because you know, other, because what I've seen, he was very determined, wants to do PhD, very focused and very forthcoming also, because you know, I remember him like five years back. I, first thing I asked him, you know, you have an engineering background, why do you think you are a good you know, student for a marketing department or you know, like that? And he said, look, you know, you have a similar background. He just, you know, we are Skype call because you know, my background is engineering, I did an MBA and a PhD. So he has a similar background. So when he was talking, uh, he was pretty much like, you know, he has done the research and what he, talk, what he wants to do. So, you know, that's all I want to say because, you know, it's, it's a great loss, uh, you know, for our department. And, you know, we had a department meeting the other day. He touched everybody because he was just like a counselor because we know the PhD students are mature students and they have financial problem, they have academic problem, they have family problem. And he was running around and helping different students, like a you know, mentor or counselor like that. So you know, it will have a long-lasting you know, impact on me and also my family because they know my PhD students and other stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'd now like to invite forward Dr. Nadej Levalier from the Lang School of Business and Economics. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm a faculty member in the Lang School of Business, and Milad was a graduate teaching assistant um, who worked with me and my team um, as we were teaching Management 4000, a capstone course for the Lang School of Business. Um, I met Milad for the first time in August of last year. It feels like it was so much longer ago than it was. And uh, Milad wanted to apply to be a teaching assistant for the course. Um, he loved strategy, and the course is about strategy. And he wanted to make an impact on students, and he wanted to make an impact right away. And uh, we, um, we had a conversation, and I knew right away that he would be a great addition to the team. Um, he, um, he was very confident, but fun, um, kind, and really committed to the success of our undergrads. Um, and um, his past experience to in Iran made him a perfect candidate. In, in my course, um, we, we do live client projects throughout the semester. And uh, um, GTAs are not only here to grade, they're mostly here to coach and support and mentor the undergrad students as they go through that project. And um, I'm really only here to, to do lecture. They do all the work. And 
um, work with the students in Milad uh, to con three sections of this big course. It's 400 students. And um, he did not disappoint. So he was a wonderful addition to the teaching team. We are, we are a team of uh, seven, me and, and the, the other GTAs. Um, he was always there for us. He was always good at reminding us um, what we had said three weeks before when I forgot. Um, he was always there to calm us down when we had heated arguments. And also he was always the first one to move into execution mode when we were talking about challenges and discussing options. Um, he always had great suggestions, but we all did not always take his suggestions on and sometimes we went with another route and he was the first one to just move on, to say, okay, fine, let's do it. He would never complain. He was always willing to share and also uh, to just execute like a great team player that he was. Um, and um, with the students, he was also a great leader. He uh, really um, impacted these students um, in this semester that he was with us teaching, teaching the course. And if you allow me, I'd like to read um, an email that I received from one of his students last semester that really, I think, summarizes well um, how Milad was as a teacher in the classroom. Out of my four years at U of G, Milad was the nicest and most helpful TA I've had. I'm sure you remember my group for Management 4000 and the disaster of a presentation we had for the poster pitch in seminar. Both you and Milad were the most helpful in recovering our poster and concept into something tangible and attainable to pitch in front of the executives. They were presenting, they were doing a big poster competition. Regardless of the issues my group had, Milad was there to support me and my group. We bounced ideas off each other countless times, trying to perfect our presentation. He met with us outside of seminar time. He was the most helpful and most importantly, optimistic about our results. I am truly gutted about the news of Milad's tragic passing. I pass on my condolences to yourself and your whole teaching team who got to know him better than I ever had the chance to. I give so much credit to Milad for my success in your class. I believe Milad was an asset to our school and the diverse background he brought to this course. As you can see, um, in the very short time that Milad was with us at the university, he impacted a lot of lives. Um, all of you friends who are here and all of us faculty, our undergrad students, we will, in our team, um, are learning to um, go on without him. We will miss him tremendously. And we try to remember and cherish all the great moments that we had with him. Thank you. I'd like now to welcome Sepide Talebi, a friend of Milad's. Hello, everyone. I never imagined that there would be a day that I have to speak in Milad's memory. But I couldn't resist not to talk about Milad. None of us has not believed yet. He never come back. But this changed nothing. We lost our friend, brother, and patron just in the moment that we were planning his welcome after three weeks. Milad was very intelligent, supportive, hardworking, kind, and full of life. 
and everyone who knew him can attest. My mind is full of memories. Sorry. Which are playing like a movie in my brain since Wednesday and making this step harder to pass. For the past few months, me, Nasran, and Milad were very close to each other. We studied together at the library, ate lunch together, and most of the times we gathered together for dinner at our house. And when one of us was not in mood, Milad, with his sense of humor, made us laugh. He always opened up time in his busy schedule to help others. The last night before his flight to Iran, also he offered us two hours to help us and find a situation for our problem. I can remember the times he was explaining the topics that I didn't understand. I was sitting in front of him, and he wrote the equation upside down. When I asked, when I asked him why, he told me it is easier for you to read. He enjoyed sharing his happiness with others. He always came with Timbits that he loved, and cookies, and shared with us while we were studying. Sorry. I cannot forget the nights that we had to study till midnight, and he never gave up even in the last moments. Always before exams, he called me and encouraged me to keep going. He was interested in literature and poems. Times and times, he sent us beautiful quotes. The last night, the night that everything finished for us, we were eating the cookies that he bought. Rasul texted me a lot, and he responded, go to sleep. I will be with you tomorrow. But maybe these memories seem like little things. But for us, who are far about, apart from our families, these small pressures are all of our world. Finally, I want to appreciate all of my friends and professors who help us to tolerate this pain. Thank you so much. I'd like to invite forward Marzia Yagini, another friend of Milad. Hello, everyone. I lost lots of friends, my dear and precious friends, in this heartbreaking tragedy. My thoughts are with them, their families. Milad was my only flow in marketing PhD program, and I've known him for a long time from my master's degree at Sharif University. He was smart, hardworking, and ambitious, who always was trying hard to do his best. 
He was very helpful to me when I arrived to the campus uh, last September and it was extremely unbelievable to me when I found out about the crash. I had a dream of Milad that night. We had a common flight to Canada. And I made to get into the plane, but Milad was not there. In my dream, I felt a deepest grief because I thought Milad had passed away. But I figured out that he was on the other side of a long, beautiful bridge while he was extremely happy. <laughs> Indeed, Tonight, I'm among you only by chance. I was supposed to be at that flight. What makes this tragedy, tragic loss more unbearing and frustrating for me is the fact that I had to cancel the same flight at last moment. My heart goes out to every last second of my friends in this crash. I'm thinking of their last unfinished messages. I'm thinking of their last goodbye to their families at the airport. I'm thinking of their last talks to each other. I'm thinking of their last dreams and regrets. I'm thinking of their last hopes and fears. <laughs> I even can't imagine how much hard it can be for their families. We can't imagine how short life can be. As a person whose life has been granted to her at her birthday anniversary, and on behalf of Milad, Ganymed, and other my friends in, the, in this tragic crash, <laughs> I invite all of you to appreciate every second of togetherness, friendship, kindness in this short opportunity of life. Thank you. Our second to last speaker of the evening is David Said, president of the Graduate Students Association. Good evening. Thank you all for joining us tonight to honor the lives of our dear colleagues, Ganamat and Milad whose lives have been tragically taken away from us. My name is David Said. I have the honor and privilege of, being, of representing our graduate student body at the University of Guelph as the president and CEO of the Graduate Student Association. It is with a very heavy heart that I join you this evening to remember Ganamat and Milad as members of our university community and who were a part of our graduate student family. For as long as the University of Guelph has remained open, students, faculty, staff, administrators, and residents of this city, all coming from different walks of life, have gathered to work, learn, and grow together. We have come together to improve life but more importantly, we have come together to create a community and a family amongst ourselves of which Ganemat and Milad were a part of in many ways. They had a passion for learning as students and a desire for the truth as researchers. They were our friends, our colleagues, our brother, our sister. 
They shared with us a commitment to strengthen our relationships with one another and a dedication to improve life. Our community today is filled with anguish and sorrow and pain as we lament the sudden loss of our beloved friends. And though we are deeply saddened by this tragic event, we must find the strength to not let this loss go in vain. Our friends' academic work, social relationships, and presence on campus has been exemplary, and their tragic loss is a reminder to us all that we are part of a greater bond. And when that bond is broken, we are no longer the same. I'm reminded of a part of a saying from the Persian poet Saadi Shirazi, who reminds us that human beings are a member of a whole creation of one essence and soul. If one member is afflicted with pain, other members uneasy will remain. Ganamat and Milad will forever remain part of our university community and graduate student family. Their memory will live on and the love we have for them in our hearts will, will never fade. In the upcoming fall of 2020, our beloved colleagues will be honored and remembered through a student memorial tree dedication. The student memorial tree dedication will recognize the contributions of Ganimat and Milad by dedicating a tree in the Arboretum in their name. It is our hope to create a lasting place to remember them on our campus community. On behalf of the Graduate Students Association, I offer my deepest condolences to the families and loved ones of Milad and, Ga and Ganimat and to Professor Tawhid Islam, Professor Faisal Mula, and to the, all the members of the Department of Marketing and Consumer Studies in the Lang School of Business and Economics and the Department of Geography, Environment and Geomatics in the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences. We've received one more letter from a friend of Milad's in Iran that will be read by uh, one of the members of our community. Hello, my name is Masa. I'm one of the executives of the Iranian uh, Student Association. Um, so we received an, a message from Sajjad Abdoli, which is uh, one of Milad's friends, and it was very important to him that we read this letter. It is hard to believe that Milad Qasemi Aryani, a kind friend, a dedicated colleague, a noted national organization for development and exceptional talents of Iran, and Sharif University alumni has left us. I lost one of my dearest friends. He was my nice colleague in Iran. Everybody was amazed by his talent and communication skills. He had a habit to help others in hard moments. He was always there for me whenever I was overwhelmed by my tasks. Such a good mentor he was. I came to Canada about one year earlier than him. We had a plan to move to and settle in Toronto after our PhD studies, so we could be close to each other again. He had a lengthy visa process. I remember about one year ago, I received a voice message from him about his visa approval. He was incredibly happy to start his PhD at the University of Guelph. That was the best message that I could receive on that cold morning in Montreal. Unbelievably, one year later, I received this message. Milad was among the passengers of flight 752. Now I need to carry on without one of my treasured friends. I will follow his dreams too. On behalf of Milad, I need to thank his supervisor, Professor Tohidul Islam, Mila told me many times that Prof. Islam has been so supportive both during his visa process and his PhD program. You will be in my heart forever, dear Milad. Sajjad Abdul. Thank you. Our final speaker is Dr. Ben Bradshaw, Assistant Vice President, Graduate Studies.
I'm grateful to be able to join the vigil tonight to remember and mourn the loss of Ganamat and Milad, both in my role as an assistant vice president here at the University of Guelph with responsibility for graduate studies, and as a Canadian and global citizen who, like all of you, has spent the week trying to process and make sense of previously unimaginable events. Many thoughtful words have already been expressed about Ganamat and Milad, and so I will not add mine so I must say that I was fortunate enough to have met one of the deceased and even experienced some of their magnetism. I would, however, like to take a moment to speak directly to some of the University of Guelph's 572 international graduate students who, like Ganamat and Milad, bravely left their home country to come to Canada to expand their knowledge, their opportunities, and ultimately their world. I would like to explicitly acknowledge the many sacrifices that you have made to come here and to thank you for doing so. By coming to the University of Guelph, Ganamat and Milad, like all of you, have of course also expanded our knowledge, our opportunities, and our worlds. Let's continue to spread and expand our worlds. Thank you. As we prepare to close our time together, I'd like to thank you for being here this evening. Your presence honors the lives of Ganimat and Milad. I'd like to thank those who spoke and shared stories, who helped us understand in some small way the remarkable lives of these two students. And also, it highlights the depth of the loss that we endure. For those who'd like to gather downstairs for further refreshment and additional time of sharing, you are most welcome. Please also remember that there are services on campus if you find yourself struggling in the coming days. Reach out to someone. Students are encouraged to visit the Student Wellness Services in the J.T. Powell Building, or to contact the Multi-Faith Resource Team, the Crisis Text Line, or an International Student Advisor. Staff and faculty are encouraged to reach out to the Employee Assistance Program or Human Resources. Thank you to the Iranian Student Association for, help, for their help in planning tonight's gathering and to the various university departments that worked quickly and collaboratively to make this time together possible. As we leave this evening, may we continue to reach out to one another in care, and may we seek to be the hands of peace and the voices of hope in our world. In closing, we will hear a song sung by the U of G choir, conducted by Marta McCarthy. Thank you.